Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric and today I wanted to go over a forward and reverse motor starter. How do you wire that up so that you can't start both starters at the same time? You're going to need two starters, a forward starter and a reverse starter. And they have to be able to come on but not at the same time. If they come on at the same time, you're going to have a direct short, face to face short, which could cause a lot of damage and it could cause a lot of injury. So how do you wire these up properly to avoid that situation? First of all, before I get started wiring this up, is I wanna show you, first of all, on a starter, all I have is two starters. These are, uh, these are Eaton uh, IEC style starters. I have two of them. Uh, they are individual starters. Now, this little product right here, this, this small little piece of plastic, is a mechanical interlock. And if you put that in the starter, it drops right into this slot, just like that. When you put the starters together, and the starters also have a couple of clips for this style starter, they have a couple of clips that we will put on the starter to hold them together and to keep them aligned, to keep that little piece of plastic aligned inside. And now, if I put the starters down, I can push down one starter, but while that one is pushed down, I can't push down the other starter, and vice versa. When I can start this starter, I won't be able to start the other starter. That's a mechanical interlock, and you have to have one on a forward and reverse starter. But besides the mechanical interlock, we are going to electrically interlock these two starters so that electrically, we cannot start them at the same time, so we'll have two safety measures, one mechanical, one electrical. That's what we're gonna to do today on this episode of Access to Power. Now I've put together these two starters, this forward reversing starter. If you remember, they, they are mechanically interlocked so you can only turn one at a time. Uh, but now, um, I want to show you visually what's happening with these starters. Here on the on the line side of the starter, I have brown, orange, yellow. So I have 480 volts coming in line one, line two, and line three. If the forward starter turns on, those lines will come directly through. So you'll have line one will go to T1, line two will go to T2, line three will go to T3, and it'll go directly out to the motor. And if you'll notice, I have these jumpered on the line side. I have this jumper for the line side as well, which will do the same thing as the this wire that I have here. Uh, this wire I have brown from line one to line one, from orange from line two to line two, and yellow from line three to line three. Uh, but if you'll notice on the secondary side or on the load side of the contactor, this is where I switch two wires. Now, if you know how to start, uh, how to reverse a three-phase motor, Really, all you do is switch two of the three phases. If you switch any two of the phases, the motor will go in the opposite direction. So here on the secondary side of the starter, I have line three from my second starter going to line one, or actually T3 going to T1 of, of this starter. Uh, uh, T2 goes to T2 and T1 goes to T3. So I'm, I'm reversing line one and line two, or T1 and, and T3, I'm reversing them so the motor will go the opposite direction. Uh, that's why you can only start one at a time. If you were to close, if you had power here and you were to close both of them at the same time, this would be a direct short between phase one or line one and line three. They'd be connected together and that would be a dead short across those, those two phases. So we'd never want to do that. So that's the reason for the mechanical interlock uh, is because we're doing this with our lines. And it's also the reason we're gonna wanna electrically interlock this as well so that we can never close two phases together and create a dead short. So I'm going to remove these conductors on the bottom of my contactor. And right here, I have this bus bar, which does exactly the same thing as these wires. I'm gonna remove them because I need to put my overload I need to put, the, put it on my starter, and I can't do it if these wires are in the way. Um, and I just want to show you, 
this is doing the same thing. So line one is closed with line three. It's not closed with line one. It's closed with uh, line three. So one to three, two to two, and one and three to one. That's how these are closed, just, just like this wiring. So I'm gonna remove these three. I'm gonna put this bus bar in and we'll continue from there. Okay, so I've installed my overload. I've also tied, uh, put my bus bar in. So all my conductors that I had these there for are now connected. Um, if you'll notice my overload, I have one overload for both starters because I really only have one motor. I've already connected my motor with this SO cord. I've already connected a motor to this, to this starter group and I've wired uh, I have control power coming over. I have this hot wire coming over. This is 110 volts coming over to feed my stop button and my forward and reversing buttons. I have a neutral coming over and feeding my overload, normally closed overload contact. And this will protect our motor if there's an overload condition. Uh, this, uh, this neutral is closed, to, so 95 is closed with 96, which comes over and feeds A2. A2 is already connected to A2 here through, through a jumper that's internal already. It's already connected to A2, and these bus bars also connect A2 from this starter to that starter. So our neutral on both starters are connected by those bus bars. So now what do I have here? I have, this is my holding contact, and we'll get to that in just a second. So here I have my 480 feeding the starters I have my starters connected together, line one, line two, and line three, all identical at the top. They're reversing at the bottom, my overload, and then my motor. So now I've turned the power on. I have 480 volts here, and I am going to manually start the motor and forward. And you'll see the motor is running counterclockwise, and that would be the forward rotation on this motor. And so now I'll stop and I'll manually start the reverse and it should be counter or it should be clockwise. And there you go. It's running clockwise. So that would be the reverse on the motor. So now how to I how do I electrically tie these together so that I can never start them both at the same time? Well, here I have let's just follow this control wiring. I have my control wiring. I'm coming over from the my breaker which is off right now, my 110 volt control. Coming over, it's feeding my stop button. The stop button is a normally closed switch, so power is always going through it. So if that is connected to this side of the stop button. So if I, were to take my, if I were to take my meter and I were to go to one side and the other, you'll see that I have a, I have a continuity between both sides of the switch. That means the switch is closed. When I push the button, the switch opens. This is exactly like a standard three wire start stop up until that point. I have my, my uh, normally closed, it comes through the normally closed, then it's feeding both buttons here. It's feeding this reverse button, it's feeding this forward button. Now, here's where my interlocking comes through. I'm gonna take my forward button and I'm feeding a contact block. Now this contact block, I need it because I need a normally closed contact. And so I'm gonna take my forward and I'm actually gonna connect it to my reversing starter. So if my reversing starter is not closed, it's a normal position, this wire is closed. So continuity again goes through this switch. It's normally, it's normally closed, so continuity goes through it and I will come through that and I will feed my coil on my starter on my forward starter. So if my reversing starter is not on, I can actually turn on my forward starter. And then I'll do the same thing with my forward starter. I'll, I'll attach a contact block so I can have a normally closed contact. And I'll take power from there and I will feed my reversing starter. So that's a coil on my reversing starter. So if 
my forward starter is not on, then my reversing starter is able to start. Finally, I have a holding contact. Now here, this is my holding contact, because right now, if I were to turn this on, I would have to hold the button on. I could turn it on, and turn the power on. I could, I could turn on the forward, but as soon as I let it go, forward would stop. Forward stops. And if I turn on reverse, my reversing starter comes on, but as soon as I let go of the button, it stops. I need a way to bypass the forward and reverse buttons to keep the motor running. So here, that's where my holding contact comes in. So I need a hold, let me turn the power off. I need a holding contact on both sides of my starter. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna feed. Now this number, this terminal is already connected to the bottom side of my normally open on this starter. But this terminal isn't. So I'm going to physically wire that up. So here, now I got have my holding contacts and I want to make, I want to tie in my holding contacts. So I'm going to go for my reversing starter and I'm going to go to the normally open on the opposite side of my normally open holding contact. So when the reversing starter closes, this normally open closes. So I'm going to go take my holding contact from my reversing starter and I'm going to come over and tie to where my reversing button comes but on the forward starter and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other starter. I'm going to go from this normally open which is tied to my holding contact. It's starting to look kind of ugly, getting kind of crowded. And I'm going to tie that in to the same place my forward my forward uh, button comes to on the reversing starter. All right, so so now I should have my interlock working just fine. So let's test out my this is my forward starter. Hit stop. It went clock. It went counterclockwise. Now I'll try my reversing starter. It's held. Hit stop. And now it's counterclockwise. Now I have this starter both electrically interlocked and mechanically interlocked. So only one can be started at one time. If I try to hit reverse, nothing happens because my forward starter is on and it's it's opening the circuit to my reverse starter, so my reverse starter cannot turn on. Until I hit stop, now I can hit the reverse starter. And if I hit forward, nothing happens because my reverse starter is keeping my forward starter from coming on. So here you have it, a forward reversing starter, both mechanically and electrically interlocked. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you want to, subscribe to our channel. And until the next time, have a great day.